Shalom, Shalom. I'm your brother Ruben from Nations of Kings and Priests, Orlando, Florida. We have a new congregation out here in California. So we want you to subscribe to their YouTube channel. Just look for the promo. And with that, we're going to say Shalom. Benjamin and Levi, yeah. these are considered to be the Jews, these three tribes. And these other tribes are the tribes of Israel. Right. I'm going to show it to you. Go ahead. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8. For finding fault with them, uh -huh. he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, uh -huh. when I will make a new covenant, gonna make the new covenant. Go ahead. with the house of Israel. The house of Israel, these ten tribes. Right, and with the house of Judah. And with the house of who? Of Judah. These three tribes. That's why he separated. Because you got to remember in, 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 in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, it was split in Israel. It split. Right? Give me Ezekiel chapter 37. But when, when they split, these 10 tribes already was exiled out. They was exiled out in their Syrian captivity. Like if you look at the statue. Right here, these are the different slaveries that the so-called Israelites went into. Like you went into Babylon, Persian Mede, right, the Greek captivity, Roman all the way down. So when they um, the northern kingdom, they was already exiled out right here. The Persian Mede captivity. They was already gone out of Jerusalem. Right? So go ahead and read that. Ezekiel 37, verse 16. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 15. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it. For Judah, for who? For Judah. These three tribes. Right, go ahead. And for the children of Israel. And the other ten tribes. His companions. They were split up. It was like at war with each other. Right, go ahead. Then take another stick. Uh, and write upon it uh, for Joseph, uh, the stick of Ephraim, uh, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, uh, and join them. He said, Do what? And join them. In the last day, this is a future prophecy. We're going to join these tribes back together. Go ahead. One to another, uh, until one stick. And it'll be one nation again. Go ahead. And they shall become one in thy hands. Uh -huh. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, uh -huh. saying, would thou not show us what this mean by thee? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the one stick of Joseph, one stick of these ten tribes, go ahead. which is in the hand of Ephraim, uh -huh. and the tribe of Israel, his fellows, brothers, go ahead. and I will put them with him, uh -huh. even with the stick of Judah. Right, because they all went their way, Judah went his way, go ahead. And make them one stick. There will be one stick in the last day. That's why we out here. Trying to make that one stick. Go ahead. And they shall be one in my hand. Uh -huh. And the stick whereon thou writest shall be in the hand before thy eyes. Uh -huh. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, uh -huh. Behold, I will take the children of Israel, the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, uh -huh. and I will gather them uh -huh. on every side uh -huh. and bring them into their own land. That's when they, the Israelites going to go back to Jerusalem. And I will make them one nation. They're going to be what? One nation. They're going to come back and be one nation again. Go ahead. In the land upon the mountains of Israel. Right. So that's when the Lord going to bring his so-called... When you look at these tribes, like most of these people out here is from the northern tribe. 
All these Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Dominicans, Mexicans, they all Israelites too, but they just don't know. That's why we out here. We out here to wake up the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Well, well, give me, give me Deuteronomy 28. I tell you, because uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Shoot. Yeah, we're gonna go to the to protect our sons, to protect our daughters. Now, matter of fact, you get better than Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11 and verse 11. And it shall come to pass. And that day, and that day, go ahead. that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. Second return of Christ. Go ahead. To recover. He gonna do what? To recover. I mean he coming to recover these children. Go ahead. The remnant uh -huh. of his people uh -huh. which shall be left uh -huh. from Assyria. From where? From Assyria. We got people in Assyria. From the East from Egypt. Egypt. And from Papro. Uh -huh. And from Cush. Uh -huh. And from Elam. So it's a lot of a lot of those names, that's why we got this down here that's out in Africa. A lot of our people are scattered. Yep, read that part again. That's why I say only a remnant. Go ahead, read that. And it shall come to pass. Read it again the And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant. What? The remnant. There's only remnant in Ethiopia. Not the both of them. The both of them, I'm going to show you where they're going to go. Of his people, which shall be left. Which shall be left from Assyria, uh -huh. from Egypt, from Papyrus, uh -huh. and from Cush, uh -huh. and from Elam, uh -huh. and from Shinnah Shehar, uh -huh. and from Hema, and from the Isles of the Sea. Alright, so they from the Isles of the Sea. Our people got remnants of Israelites everywhere, but let's see what a whole couple of them have. Hold it here, Mike. I think it might be. Now, I'm wondering if you would answer my question about. You want to know where they at? Or you want to know where to say about the Jews in there? Well, I want to know why. Well, okay, first of all, we know the goals of the family are not. Uh, right. Okay. I'm going to ask you about Judah. In my home, right there, we have a sense of the family. You know, pull out the music. And I know that was a lot of music. I know what the wrong wrong week. I tell you something. Give me uh John chapter six. You know, so like the pastor called you and all the things. And then I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you something. Show you something. A lot of people don't know this. I'm gonna show you something very important. John chapter 8 and verse 31. He said Jesus to the Jews. To the Jews. To the Jews. To the Jews. Go ahead. Which believed on him. That did what? Believed on him. So the Jews believed on Christ, right? Keep reading. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Now give me Mark. Right. We're gonna show you. So, there was a lot of Jews that believed. So we're gonna see who, who committed those crimes. Mark chapter eight and verse thirty-one. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer for many things and be rejected of the elders. Be rejected by who? The elders. Be rejected by the elders. Go ahead. And of the chief priests. And the chief priests. And scribes. And the scribes. So the scribes and the Pharisees, they the ones who reject the priests. Right. Not the regular, not the Jews. They believe the Jews. Right? Because if you think about it, the scribes and Pharisees, they was always questioning Jesus. On the Sabbath day, they, why are you picking corn? Why are you hearing the people? They were always coming against Christ. So when Jesus Christ got persecuted, the Jews didn't kill him. The Romans killed him, but the Jews turned him in. The, the scribes and the Pharisees, they turned Christ in. They the ones who went to Caiaphas, I mean to the uh, to the, all of the uh, 
all of the teams and stuff to put them in prison. Pirate. Yeah, the pirate, conscious pirate, right, right. Go to uh, John Tapia, that. He said that he was called to the lost city but it was a prophecy that the Jews knew that had to happen. I think it might be like 43 or something. John chapter 11 and verse 47. Uh -huh. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we for this man doing many miracles? Right, so the priests, they knew something. All the Jews do something. I'm going to tell you what they do. If we let him thus alone, we let Jesus all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away. And the Romans, the Romans came and gathered. Go ahead shall come and take away uh -huh. both our place and nation. Right. They say, if we let Jesus Christ live, this is what they mean. The world is going to take our place. And we're going to see why the Jews, why did they want Christ to die? They wanted him to die. He had to die. He had to, and I'm going to show you why. Go ahead. And one of them made Christ. One of them, it was a, one of the priests. Go ahead. Being the high priest, he was a high priest. Oh, yeah. That same year, uh -huh. said unto them, uh -huh. "Ye know nothing at all." You tell the people, y'all don't know what y'all talking about, right? Go ahead. Nor consider uh -huh. that it is expedient. It's expedient that what for us, for us, the Jews. It's expedient for the Jews that what that one man, that one man, Jesus Christ, should die for the people. You got it. What die for the people? They knew Jesus Christ had to die for the people. That's the only way the nation is going to continue. If Jesus Christ didn't die, the nation of Israel would have died off. So he had to die. They had to, he had to be the sacrifice for the children of Israel. Go ahead. And that the whole nation perished not. He had to die so the whole nation didn't perish off. Go ahead. And this speak he not of himself, uh -huh. but being high priest that year, uh -huh. he prophesied uh -huh. that Jesus that Jesus should die for that nation. He had to die for the nation of Israel. And not for that nation only, uh -huh. but for also he should gather together. You want to do what? Gather together. Gather together what? In one, the children of God uh -huh. that were scattered abroad. Like the Israelites that were scattered from the four corners. So Christ had to die. They had to, they had to make him a sacrifice for the nation of Israel. And so the nation would carry it off. <laughs> they knew the prophecy. They knew that Christ had to be the, 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 the lamb for the Israel. He had to die so his blood, his blood would be the sacrifice for the sins of the Israelites. So if he did, the whole nation would have got killed for we would continue breaking God's law. Throughout from the beginning of the Bible to the end. And today. Today, the Israelites are still breaking God's laws today. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 30. All the Israelites, like all these people out here, they are the Israelites. Most of them, probably 90 percent of these people out here are the real Israelites. And they're still breaking God's laws today. Now this is a prophecy right here, sister. Listen up. What's gonna happen when we stop breaking God's law? Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 1. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass. This is the future. It's gonna come to pass in the future. Go ahead. When all these things are come upon thee, uh -huh. the blessings and the curse. The blessings and the curse. Go ahead. Which I have set before thee. Uh -huh. And thou shalt call them to mind uh -huh. among all the nations. Uh -huh. Whether the Lord thy God hath driven thee. Uh -huh. And shall return. You got to return it to back to the Lord. Unto the Lord thy God. We got to return back in Israel. Like, hey, Baptist, Christian. Can't be that. Like them over there. They ain't, they ain't doing that false worship. That's false religion, false worship. Nowhere in the Bible God says worship man made religion. Man, man. That's all man made religion. Oh, no, no. We got to. Because the Bible tells us to defend the gospel. We got to defend the faith. It's in the Bible. It tells us to contend for the faith. So when people, and when we read Leviticus, it tells us to rebuke your brothers, rebuke your brothers and sisters when they're doing something wrong. You got to tell them. 
we don't tell them. Let me show you what's going to happen if we don't tell them. Go to Ezekiel chapter 3. Yeah, we can take it right We're going to read this scripture right here. We don't tell our people they claim they're doing something else. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 15. Then came to them the captivity. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17. We don't warn our people. Go ahead. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman. What the Lord made us? I have made thee a watchman. So we a watchman over the children of Israel. Go ahead. Unto the house of Israel. Uh -huh. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth. Uh -huh. Give them warning what for the me. Lord say? Give them warning for me. So we got to tell our people when they sin or when they doing something wrong. The Lord say, give them warning for me. Go ahead. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. If we don't warn them, they're going to die. Go ahead. And thou, and thou givest them not warning. If we don't warn them, we just let them be and don't say nothing. Go ahead. Nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way. warn them. Go ahead. To save his life. To do what? To save his life. What's going to happen? The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. He's going to die in his sins. Go ahead. But his blood will I require at thy hand. We're going to at our hand. It's going to be all, their blood is going to be at our hands because we didn't warn them. Go ahead. Yet, if thou warn the wicked. If we correct them and warn them. Go ahead. And he turn not from his wickedness. And they, they don't want to listen. Go ahead. Nor from his wicked way. Uh-huh. He shall die in his iniquity. He's going to die in his iniquity, but what? But thou has delivered thou soul. Right, we delivered our soul because we didn't. That's why we out here. We out here to warn it. That's right. We're the watchmen of Israel. We watch our people. We love our people. We don't make one dollar out being out here. We out here for six, seven, eight hours. All day. Okay. That's what the Lord called. That ain't a what lot of people out here doing things with Yeah, a lot of people. They do something like a wick chair or a wick. Nah, that means that's uh, that, that, talking about like evil deeds. Deed. That's what it means. Yeah, it means twisting, whether it's in the mind or the evil deeds. But, yeah, I'm with you. That's what the Lord There's a lot of people out here that are going to hell, but I see what your mission is. Let me ask you a question. What is, what is, what is hell? What, what they're trying to do. What is hell, Lord, to the Bible? What's the place that is taking care of us so that we don't do that? Right? That's what, that's what they teach. There ain't no place called hell. Well, it's in the word of God. Hell is talking about it. It's it. Yeah, hell right here on this earth. Yeah, that's what it is. We in hell right now. That's what it been. When you look up hell in the Bible, it just means the grave or the dead. And when people die, they go to the grave or the dead. Well, when I say it's hell right here, but according to Psalm 91, it's in the place of the most high. All of that won't bother you. And let's go a little deeper in Goshen. Where the children of Israel were, and all of the tribes, and all of the plagues, all the plagues that was going on. So he had preserved Judah in Goshen, and they would get affected by all of those plagues. So we can have Goshen right here on the earth. Yeah. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 4. Yeah. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from which thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. Or else will I come unto thee quickly, and will remove thou candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hast it the deeds of the, the Nicolonians, the, Nic the Nicolonians, Nicolaisians, Nicolaisians. Yeah, I've been reading Revelation. You know where Nicolaitans come from? Christian church. That's really the part of the Christian church. Well, let me you say, tell I you. got something against the Nicolaitans. I appreciate you all reading all this for me. Talk about Christian. Where did that word Christian come from, that label? Well, uh, Christian came from when the disciples were walking. They were, they were calling them Christian because it was a negative turn. It was not happy to be It was negative. It was a negative turn. Look at them Christians. They called them that because they were following Christ every way. Right. 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 It was a tax call right. because the Romans and Antioch. Right. In the book right. of Acts, they were first called Christians. 
Ain't nothing wrong with being a Christian. And they do it out of ignorance. Right. It's a derogatory right. term. Right. But I don't want to get on you know that. What? But I want to ask you one more question. Oh, yeah. What is uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi to do to prepare? To prepare. To go. All right, we'll just read that. Go back to the Follow these steps, sister. You gotta follow these steps, these instructions. Deuteronomy chapter Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass. So he said when it comes to pass, it means in the future. Oh yeah. When all these things uh -huh. are come upon thee, uh -huh. the blessings, he had the blessings. All right, go ahead. and the curse. Now we under the curses of Deuteronomy 28, right which, which I have set before thee, uh -huh. and thou shalt call them to mind. So we call the curses in our mind. We call them to mind. Go ahead. Among all the nations, uh -huh. whether the Lord thy God hath driven thee, uh -huh. and shall return. This is what Judah, Benjamin, and all the Israelites got to do. They got to do what? And shall return. We got to return. Go ahead. Unto the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. And shall obey his voice. But we, when we disobey his voice, we had the curse. So now we got to obey his voice. But that means we got to keep his commandments. Go ahead. According to all that I command thee this day. Uh -huh. Thou and thou children. Who? Thou and thou children. Us and our family. Our children, our children. Oh, yeah. With all thine heart. You gotta do it how? With all thy heart uh -huh. and with all thy soul. Uh -huh. That then. You said you gotta keep the commandments with all your heart, all your soul. Once we Israelites do that, what it say? That then. That what? That then. When we do that, what? That then. That then, when we start keeping the commandments as a nation, then go ahead. The Lord thy God uh -huh. will turn thy captivity. Will turn our captivity and do what? And have compassion upon thee. Uh -huh. And will return uh -huh. and gather thee. Gonna do what? And will return and gather That's thee. Christ going to come and gather once we start keeping God's commandments as a nation. He's going to come and gather so glad I don't know. Keep reading. He's gonna tell you. Keep reading. Oh, okay. Okay. You got to the book, Gather thee from all the nations. We're gonna come and gather wherever we were scattered across the world. Go ahead. Whether the Lord thy God have scattered thee. Uh -huh. If any of thine be driven out uh -huh. unto the other most parts of heaven, uh -huh. from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee. Gonna gather all the church. Go ahead. From this will he fetch thee. Uh -huh. And the Lord thy God will bring thee. He's going to bring us. Go ahead. Into the land which thy fathers possess. Back into Jerusalem. He's going to bring us back into the land our fathers possess. This is the Go ahead. And thou shalt possess it. We're going to possess that land. Go ahead. And he will do thee good. He's going to do us good. And multiply thee uh -huh. above thy fathers. We're going to have multipliers above our fathers. Our forefathers. When they were in their land. Go ahead. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. All right, that's talking about the new covenant. We want to put the new covenant in our heart. Go ahead. And the heart of thy seed, uh -huh. to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart uh -huh. and with all thy soul, uh -huh. that thou mayest live. Uh -huh. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses. We're going to take all the curses off the Israelites and do what? Upon thy... The, so like, and the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thou enemies. Upon the Gentiles. They're going to be under the curses. Do you get it? That's what we got to do. that Christ redeemed us out of animal sacrifice. That's what that's talking about. Animal sacrifice. We still under the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28 because our people still being done down in the street. We still on the bottom of society. Our people haven't rise enough. Go oh, give me 40, uh, 46. I'm going to show you. Watch this. Oh yeah, we are going to rise up. Versus over in no, we gotta rise up here. Thank you. Then the Lord gonna come Thank and put us back in the right here. Look, That in Galatians ain't talking about Christ being the person. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 46. Watch this. 
and thou shalt be upon thee for a sign. He's talking about the curse is going to be upon us for a sign. Go ahead. And for a wonder. Uh -huh. And upon thou seed forever. How long? Forever. How long? Forever. Galatians said it's done away with. Forever. Be under the curses of Christ and time. That's what it said in Deuteronomy chapter 30. We're going to be under the curses of Christ from the gathering. When it's talking about we're not under the curses that Christ redeemed us from the curse, it's talking about the curse of animal sacrifice. Go to Hebrews chapter uh, 10 and verse 5. I'm going to show you. I got to move it along, but that's where I put the brakes on when you said it was still under the curse. Yeah. Because we live from the inside out. This, when this flesh, oh, yeah, this when this flesh dies, you're still going to have to go somewhere. And I want to make sure that I have accepted Christ you gotta, in my heart. I've got to keep God's command. That's right. Because the Lord don't care about what's oh, in your so heart. He don't that. care about what's in your heart. Yeah. He don't care about your feelings or what you think. You know what the Lord care about? Keep my commandments and yeah, live. That's what he care about. about our Go to, let's see if he commands about our heart. Go to Jeremiah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go to Jeremiah. Let's said, love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your I think it's uh, 17 years. Watch it. Let's see what the Lord says about our heart. Because you say you the Lord care about our heart. Let's see what the what the Bible says. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. This is the, the heart. The what? The heart. The heart is what? It's deceitful. It's what? It's deceitful. Uh -huh. Above all things. Uh -huh. And desperately wicked. Now give me Mark uh -huh. chapter 7 and verse 21. We're going to show you. But when you start leaning on your own self, your own thoughts, your own heart. The Lord said that's wicked in this city. Watch this. Yeah, because I just said it's keeping on our heart. What do we have in our heart? Anger, grudges, unforgiveness. We need the Lord to clean that out. Mark chapter 7 and 21. For within, within, from, or from within, out of the heart, the heart of men, uh -huh. proceed evil thoughts, uh -huh. adultery, uh -huh. fornication, uh -huh. murder, theft. Covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye. I go to Proverbs. That's right. Out of all of that. So the people who are doing those things, it was in their heart first. Always going to be in your heart. Because if, you're not, if, you, if you don't keep God's commandments, how are you going to know order and instruction? That is like when people say, oh, I'm a doctor, and they don't even go to the school to learn to be a doctor. I just can't go into the surgery with a knife and just start cutting on people. I have to go to the school. Watch me read that. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Uh -huh. Trust in the Lord. What did the Bible say? Trust in the Lord. You got to trust in the Lord. Go ahead. With all thine heart. Uh -huh. And lean not unto thy own understanding. Right. When we start doing all your ways, right. acknowledge God. Right. And he will direct That's what we got to do. We got to acknowledge God. Right. We got to make Are you sure every day that we ask for forgiveness. How you do that? Holy Spirit. 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 Hold on, I'm gonna read one scripture before you go. Yeah, I was just to get prepared to go. Just read one scripture before you go. Read one scripture before you go. John chapter two and verse three. And when they wanted wine. First John chapter two and verse three. And hereby we know that we know him. That's how we know we know Christ. If we keep his commandments, if we do what? If we keep his commandments, what we got to do to get gathered? If we keep his commandments, go ahead. And he that saith, I know him. People say they know the Lord because it's like, I, 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 I believe in my heart, I believe in my mind, I think about it. He say, go ahead. Go ahead. He that saith, I know him. You say you know him. And keep not his commandments. And you ain't keeping God's commandments. Is a liar. You a what? Is a liar. You a liar. Right? Go ahead. And the truth is not in him. And the truth is what? It's not in him. Uh -huh. But whoso keepeth his word. Whoever keepeth his commandments. In him 
Verily is the love of God perfected. Uh -huh. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abide in him. He that abide in him. Ought himself also so to walk. Uh -huh. Even as he walked. So we gotta walk the same way. Right. Right in the we talking we no no we talking about these are commandments. That's a command. That's a command. Give me Isaiah 66. Uh, we're gonna see in the future what's gonna happen. If you don't, that all apply to this. Okay, now since there's so I'm not gonna debate After he named those two, did he start naming more? Did he just say two, or did he start naming more commandments after? Yeah, yeah, but if you love the Lord and you defiling your temple, which is your body, you put pork in your temple, what did God say? Him I will destroy. Right. Let's see what Christ says. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. What do it mean to fulfill? It means to uh, walk it out, live it out, and to put a nice little ribbon on it. <laughs> no. We'll read it. Hold a loop. 24, 44. We'll show you what it means to fulfill the law. Because people say he took it and done away with it. But no, that's not true. No, he didn't do away with it. He fulfilled it. We're going to see what it means. The law, you know, because I they were trying to trip him up. Let's see what it means, Bobby. He healed on the Sabbath and all of that. Luke chapter 24 and verse 44. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you, uh -huh. while I was yet with you, uh -huh. that all things must be fulfilled. All things got to be what? Must be fulfilled. So he's about to tell you what he fulfilled. Which were written in the law of Moses, uh -huh. and in the prophets, uh -huh. and in the Psalms concerning me. What happened in the Psalms of Hermes? It's death. That's what he came to fulfill. It's death. It's burial and it's resurrection. Now let's go back. He didn't come. He didn't come to fulfill and done away with the law. So keep reading well, that. I don't know where it is, but I gotta run. But Moses and the prophets. Right, but why didn't he? He said if you break one, it is the right. commandment. He's guilty of them all. No, no, no. Keep it watching. Keep reading. Keep watching. Let's go one more script. For verily I say unto you, uh -huh. and to heaven and earth pass. To heaven and earth pass. One jot, one jot, or one tittle, uh -huh. shall in no wise pass from the law. Nothing gonna pass from the law. To Why? all be fulfilled. Everything ain't been fulfilled in the Bible. The still prophecy still gotta come to pass. Right, go ahead. Whosoever therefore uh -huh. shall break one of these least commandments, Whoever break one of God's least commandments, shall teach men, and teach men, and so, like the Christian church, you can eat pork, you can be a homosexual, you can do whatever you wanna do. Wicked. Just believe in the Lord. Go ahead. He shall be called the least in the, the kingdom, kingdom of heaven. You ain't never seen homosexuals in the Christian church. It's That'd a pastor in Atlanta. Pastor. pastor in Atlanta said he's growing weed for the members. Christian church is wicked in all. Jamal Bryant. All right, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Right. But whoso ever shall do and teach them teach the, commandments. the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Right. We read in Deuteronomy chapter 30 a prophecy. Christ is not coming back to keep his command. That's the only way Christ is coming back and making a second return. He's not coming back no other way. Okay. No other way. All right. You can prove me well, any other way. I would. Right, let me just throw this out. Let me throw this out. Listen, if you're a pastor. <laughs> You know, you know women don't hold you. <laughs> That's right. another law. You know that, right? I'm a minister. You know what minister means? Yeah, but it's... Whatever I serve, that minister. All right. I did serve. Okay. Anyway, what I was going to say was, um, you said if you look upon a woman to lust, you committed adultery. Okay? 
Okay. So, no, no, no. Go to James. No, I'm, I'm, no, you don't, don't understand no that scripture. No, y'all don't understand no, if you break one commandment, you do. Y'all don't understand it. Go to James chapter two. You don't understand that scripture. A lot of people break that scripture down. Totally wrong. They don't keep reading. That's what y'all Christians don't do. Y'all don't keep reading it. I'm going to show you. Read that. James chapter like two. Because you're saying if you break one scripture, why this? We're going to read it for you. Go ahead. Like the word of God. James chapter 2 and verse 8. If ye fulfill the royal law. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go up. Go up to about 5. James chapter 2 and verse 5. Hearken, my beloved brother. All right, right here, verse 10. Hold on, don't go nowhere. Read this. Go ahead, read verse 10. James chapter 2. We're going to break it down the correct way. Go ahead. James chapter 2 and verse 10. Uh -huh. For whosoever shall keep the whole law. Whoever keep the whole law. Oh, Lord, animal, when you keep the whole law, what it mean? Animal sacrifice. That means we have to stone people. Yes. We have to put women to the state. That's, right. That's the whole law. If is that in the law? We have to kill you. Is that a law? Is that a law? You know, no, is it a law? The a first law. five books of Moses is the law. I know that. Right, so in the law, if a woman is a whore in the land, we have to we have to do what? Burn her to the state. That's a law. So we're going to break it down the right way. Go ahead, read it again. For whosoever shall keep the whole law. We ain't telling you to keep the whole law. Go ahead. And yet offend in one point, uh -huh. he is guilty of all. You have to keep them all. You have to burn women to the state. We have to stone little kids. We have to do all of that, right? Go ahead. For he that said, I do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Uh -huh. Now, if thou commit uh, in a, if, if thou commit no adultery, uh -huh. yet if thou kill, uh -huh. thou art become a transgressor of the law. You become breaking the law. All right, go ahead. So speak ye. You gonna keep reading because the Christians stop right there. See, I gotta keep what I'm begging. I'm guilty of more. They stop reading. We are gonna keep reading. Go ahead. So speak ye, uh -huh. and so do. Speak ye and do. Speak ye and do. Go ahead. And so do. Uh -huh. And they that shall be judged. They're going to be judged by what? By the law of liberty. What's that, sir? By the law of liberty. What's the law of liberty? The law of liberty is Christ. The liberty is Christ. No. The word, so wait a minute. The word. Y'all just showed me a scripture that say that. Great. Oh, no. Give me the Hebrew. Look it up in Hebrew. James chapter 2 of liberty. Because no, she no. said that that don't mean it means great. Go to Where Romans chapter. Liberty Go to Romans. No. no. We know it's not. Liberty means great. We got the Hebrew book right here. You believe in the, the word? Go to the Romans chapter 6 and 1. Hurry up and go to Romans 6 and 1. No, not the book of Hebrew. We're talking about the concordance. In the Greek, we're going to look it up in the Greek. Go ahead, read that. When he looks up liberty, let's look it up. I let's hope he reads it out. He's gonna say uh, under grace. Go ahead, read that. Read I it. hope he reads it out of the Old Testament because in the New Testament, we're gonna go to right there where it says we are gonna be judged by the law of liberty. The law under grace. And Paul go through, watch, Come read. Romans read. chapter 6 and verse 1. Read. What shall we say then? Uh -huh. Shall we continue in sin? What sin? What is sin? What is sin? It's missing the mark. No, no, sin is breaking God's law. John chapter it's 1, verse 1. Transgression, transgression of the law. That's transgression of the law. Right? So if you, keep, if you read it again. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Shall we keep breaking God's law? That grace may abound. Are we under grace? God forbid. God forbid. We still got to keep the law. We still got to keep the best of your capability. That's why I say, with all your heart, with all your soul. No, we don't. No, we don't. People don't do it. I'm talking about nice people. We need poor sisters. Give me Isaiah 6. I'm going to show you what Christ is going to do. The people that kept the They still kept the law. When they were in Babylon, they still kept the law. Right. Every captivity they went to, the Israelites still kept the law. Right? Yeah, just like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We're going to show you what Christ is going to do with people. They didn't need all that other food. 
Yeah. You know, my uh, husband, uh, he used to be a Negro for life. Yeah. And then he went on over to the Moors, the Black Moors. And uh, I think that's where he's at now, with the Moors. Moors are the Israelites. No, they claim they're not. Well, they, they don't know the Bible. But anyway, go ahead. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 15. The original Moors were Hebrew Israelites. It's just like the Christians. Right. The original Christians were Jews. Right. Now it's all the 300. The movie 300. Don't want this one. Right. Well, Paul was called to the Gentiles. Peter was called. To Isaiah chapter 66. I'm going to show you about four. Go in verse 15. Uh -huh. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. Well, this is Christ coming with fire. And with his chariot, like a whirlwind. Uh -huh. To render his anger with fury. Christ. The camera had cut off. And I was doing the editing on the video. So I'm going to finish the video off where the lady left off. Before she walked off. She walked off and poured a... Uh, First Timothy 4 and 4. So somebody pull that real quick what she pulled out. We're going to read that scripture and then we're going to go into the scripture that we went into to give her more clarification on what that scripture was talking about. All right? So read that First Timothy chapter 4 and 4. Because a lot of Christians read this, Christ, uh, this scripture to justify that they can eat pork. So go ahead and read that. It's the book of First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 4. For every creature of God is good. So she read it. She said, every creature of God is good. Right? Go ahead. And nothing to be refused. No food can be refused. Right? No food. Right? So you might as well eat a rattlesnake or whatever. Go ahead. Read. If it be received with thanksgiving. So that's what all Christians say. If it be received with thanksgiving. Right? If you pray over it, you can eat it. Right? Go ahead. For it is sanctified. Hold on. Read that part again. For it is sanctified. That's the key word in that scripture. Because it is sanctified, right? Go ahead. By the word of God. So did God, can you find me a scripture in the Bible where God is sanctifying pork? Can you find me a scripture in the Bible where God is sanctifying pork? So let's go to Leviticus 11 and 7 real quick. Where we, where, uh, where we went to. Show her you can't eat pork. Because God never sanctified pork. Even when he was putting the animals on the ark, he only sanctified certain animals. He separated the clean animals with the unclean animals. That's right. For a reason. Right, so read that. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 7. Uh -huh. And the swine. And the swine, which is the pig or the pork. Go ahead. Though he divide the hoof uh -huh. and be cloven-footed. Right. Yet he cheweth not the cut. Because the pig don't have two stomachs. You can't regurgitate his food, put it down, and digest it, come up and bring it back down and redigest it. The food, the germs, the worms, everything stays inside the pig because the pig don't have a sweat gland. So like we sweat and the germs come out, the germs stay with inside of the pork. Right? Go ahead. He is unclean to you. What the Lord say? He is unclean to you. The Lord say that the pork is unclean to you. Go ahead. Of their flesh shall you not eat. So you can't eat pork. Because God never sanctified it. God is a God that don't change. That's right. I'm going to tell you don't eat pork. And then a couple years later, oh, I made a mistake. Go ahead and eat. The pig is the same in ancient days. And it's still the same today as a defiled, nasty animal. That's right. Right? So go ahead. And their carcasses shall ye not touch. Uh -huh. They are unclean to you. Right, it's unclean to you. Go ahead. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Uh -huh. Whatsoever hath fins and scales. So you got to eat the fish or the food that's in the ocean with fins and scales. You can't eat no catfish. You can't be eating uh, shrimp, crab, and lobster, and oysters. Right, go ahead. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, uh -huh. in the seas, and in the rivers, uh -huh. them shall ye eat. You can only eat the fish that got skin, uh, fins and scales. Go ahead. And, uh, and all that have not fins nor scales uh -huh. in the seas and in the rivers, uh -huh. of all that move in the waters, right. and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. It shall be what? They shall be an abomination unto you. So eating those foods are an abomination to God. 
right? That's an abomination to God, right? So jump to verse 44, because remember in Timothy say that the food had to be sanctified by God. That's right. Let's see what it was talking about, Leviticus 11 and 44. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 44. Start at verse 43. 43. Uh -huh. Ye shall not make yourselves abominable. You can't make yourself abominable. Right? When you eat pork, that's an abomination. Now, when you eat it, you're making yourself abominable. Right? Go ahead. With any creeping thing that creepeth, right. neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them. When you eat that stuff, you're making yourself or your temple unclean. Go ahead. That ye should be defiled thereby. Remember, abomination and ye shall be defiled. Remember those two key words, abomination and defiled. Go ahead. For I am the Lord your God. Uh -huh. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves. You shall what? Sanctify yourselves. Sanctify yourself by eating the food that God sanctified for you to eat. That's what it was going on too. That's right. Sanctified by God. Right, go ahead. And ye shall be holy, uh -huh. for I am holy. So that's how you sanctify yourself. Pork is not a holy food. It don't have no vitamins in it or nothing that's, that's giving you good health. Teach us. It's tearing your health down. It's giving you high blood pressure, diabetes, gout, that's right. a big, oversized belly, right? Making you slow, tired, right? There's no sanctifying that food, right? Go ahead. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping things that creepeth upon the earth. So you can't defile yourself with those things, right? So let's go to Revelation 21 and 27. Remember, we're talking about abomination and defile. That's right. So read Revelation 1 and then 20, 21 and 1 and then drop to 27. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 1. Uh -huh. And I saw a new heaven uh -huh. and a new earth. So this is talking about heaven, right? <laughs> so let's talk, let's read all the way down to the last verse. Because so this is describing everything in heaven. Right? Read the last verse, 27. Verse 27. Uh -huh. And there shall in no wise enter into it. There shall no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. You ain't getting in there. Go ahead. Anything that defiles. Anything that what? Anything that defiles. We just read in Leviticus, if you defile yourself by eating pork, you're defiling yourself by eating pork. So if you eat pork, you're not getting into the kingdom of heaven. That's right. right. Go ahead. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination. And then we read that too. That food is an abomination. Say anything that worketh an abomination is not getting in the kingdom of heaven. But these Christians swear up and down, they can do whatever they want to and get the key, right? That because these pastors, pork chop eating pastors, teaching the people wrong. Look at that scripture. Or make it a lie. Or a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Right, now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. So anything that defile your temple, or anything that making an abomination, you're not getting into the kingdom of heaven. You're not going to be sitting in the kingdom of heaven and Christ and the disciples sitting at the table and say, come and join me for a damn pork chop or a damn baconator sandwich. Tea chop. There's no way they're going to be doing that in the kingdom of heaven. So what makes you think you can eat all kind of defiled and disgusting food today and make it to the kingdom of heaven? There's no way. Isaiah 66. And 15 on down, tell you that the Lord coming back to destroy those that, that eat the pork. That's right. right? They all going to be consumed together. Right, so read that. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, and verse 16. Read. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. Right, your body is the temple of God, man. If your body is the temple of God, you got to treat your body right, man. You got to take showers. Brush your teeth. That's right. Good hygiene, man. You can't be a dirty dude, man. There's laws on all filthiness, man. Mm -hmm. You can't be caught, you can't be overeating. Right? There's laws on your temple. You can't be smoking weed. You can't put tattoos all over your body. That's right. You can't put a damn diamond in the middle of your forehead like these damn rappers do, man. Right? Go ahead. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. The Spirit of God dwelleth in you. That's how you become clean and holy and sanctified. That's how the Spirit of God dwells in you. That's right. 
If any man defile the temple of God. Do you defile your temple by eating that nasty pork, that swine? Right? We know all food that we eat is not super clean. You gotta do the best of your business. You know, cookies and all that stuff. But you gotta, you gotta, you can't eat and all that junk food either, man. You know, it's not unlawful, but then again, it's gonna make you get all unhealthy. Right? Go ahead. Him shall God destroy. So if you destroy your temple, God gonna destroy you. Right? Go ahead. For the temple of God is holy. The temple of God is what? For the temple of God is holy. Didn't we just read that in Leviticus? That's right. Holy, separate, sanctified. Right? So with that, we're going to end this video with that. We're going to say Shalom. No eating pork.